Hello and welcome. This is the first video in a series of four videos which are aimed to help you with the necessary mathematical skills for the Micro for Business module. In this first video, we are going to recap the basic mathematical skills that are useful for this module. We are going to cover the following topics. We are going to talk about how to read mathematical notation. Then I'm going to introduce you to the special delta notation, which is notifying change. Then I'll show you how you can use the scientific calculator. We're going to look at some percentage calculations, a little recap on negative numbers. We're going to the concept of elasticity and calculations around elasticity and then how to work with tables because there are some special tables that you need to be familiar with. So how can we read mathematical notations? If you look at the slide, there are quite a few different ways of noting different concepts in microeconomics. If you look at the first line, P0, P1, Q0, Q1, in mathematics, every letter means something special. For example, in microeconomics, when you see the capital P, that usually refers to price, and the capital Q usually refers to quantity. But what is the purpose of the little 0 and 1 in the subscript? Well, using different notation in the subscript, we are notifying that we're talking about different prices or different quantities. For example, P0 could be the starting price and P1 could be the final price. Similarly, for the Q, Q0 could be the starting quantity and Q1 could be the final quantity. In the second row, when you have got pairs of quantities and prices in a bracket, this is usually the mathematician's way of talking about ordered pairs. So in these ordered pairs, the order is important. In this specific notation, price always comes first and quantity always comes second. It's very similar to the coordinate system when X coordinates always come first and Y coordinates comes second. So if you just look at the number, the 512, knowing that this follows the price quantity order, then I can say that for price 5, I can sell 12 quantities. In the third row, if you look at it, it says PX equals F bracket QX and PY equals G bracket QY. What do we mean by this? Well, this is the mathematical way of showing that the price of good X is a function of quantity of the same good. In this specific notation, we haven't actually detailed what kind of function is this, but we just know that the price of product X will depend on the quantity of that same product. How? We would need to give in more details somewhere later. If I look at the PY, then I use a different letter there, G. G follows from F in the alphabet, so this is the mathematician's way of telling you that the price of good Y is a function of quantity Y, but this function is different from the function that I used for good X. In the next line, second from bottom, QX equals F bracket PX, PY, PJ, M, A, dot, dot, dot. This is the mathematician's way of showing you that the quantity of product X is a function of many different variables. So, how many products I can sell of quantity X would depend on the price of X, would depend on the price of Y and the price of J, which are two alternative goods, M, which is usually the income, and A could be some other variable. The dot 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 in this case means that there are a lot more other variables following 
which are not necessarily important in this very specific case. In the last row, in Federica's lectures, you might have seen this QXD quite often. And by now, you should be familiar with the fact that this is her way of showing you that now I'm talking about the quantity of X which is demanded.